when you find it, then the charcoal bright red. This is a, uh, this then is you a can fund, accountability. <laughs> you find government's charcoal to it's bright it's, red. It's a core for accountability. I enjoy it. Johnny, first and foremost, let me take this opportunity as God. I haven't seen you for quite some time. You are doing a very good job for the mother Ghana. Remain undaunted. This is our society, right. and it will take me and you to mm. do it. That's why I always watch Johnny's Bite. <laughs> <laughs> the general watches Johnny's Bite. Very, every day. Thank I you very much. And I is devoid of insults, mm -hmm. but straight to the point, mm. factual and fearless. Rahim. Hey, Charlie, no be joke. Oh. You know, the pressure joking. people like Johnny can give you. No, no. You know, get gray hair, you I'm, go get I'm, gray hair. I'm innocent. And <laughs> that's what I'm saying, that the pressure Johnny and his people, <laughs> mm -hmm. the pressure they can give you, you know, get gray hair, you go get. So your best bet is not mm. to have hair. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Today is Wednesday. Not so long ago, we had our 65th independence anniversary. And as has become normal practice, we have people uh, in groups go to march. I've had opportunity to march from GSS-1 all the way to SSS-3. So I know what it was then. We wear our buying socks. We'll be giving some hard bread and fun ice sometimes and, and fried rice and chicken and whatever it is. So I know, I know the gig. I saw this. These are supposed to be Nation Builders Core, NAPCO. And you know how on TV3 New Day, Bella, Cookie, and I have been very vocal about the plight of NAPCO folks. About the plight of NAPCO folks. So this is what we saw. He said, we refuse to be lied by the MPP. In fact, lied to. So, bro, for the me there. We refuse to be lied to by the NDC. NAPCO is better. That's what NAPCO's uh, be uh, beneficiaries are saying. NAPCO has helped us to establish our businesses. Okay. NAPCO has been the game changer. Thank you, MPP. Our dear MPs, NAPCO trainees say, pass, okay, this is says, Brofono sign, and yet the boom, says, pass the E-Levy for a better Ghana. E-Levy will help solve our problems. This is what we are told is a representation of NAPCO. Now, this particular woman, for example, I, I, I don't know if, if the program was for young people, was for retirees, or the program is just for uh, Matra Makwe, I don't know. But the NAPCO guys, if this is your member, congratulations. If this is not your member, you need to speak up. There's another, and not just not to pick on her, there's another here. This one too, it's very, they, they eat very, very youthful. They look very, very useful. So these are NAPCO beneficiaries who are happy, obviously. And guess what? It has a tag of the vice president's social media handle. So yes, we want leadership, but we also want honest leadership. And so I'm throwing this to the NAPCO beneficiaries. You send us the messages to speak on your behalf. You tell us what is happening within your domain. If you were the ones who were at the independence celebration at Cape Coast. Fair enough. It means that all the advocacy we have been doing for you has yielded results and we are happy to back off. So congratulations and thank you. But if these people are not your members, please speak up and expose them. So you have two options. Because if you don't, if we don't get that indication from you that you don't know them, and I know that you are organized uh, in regions and districts, and you have coordinators who look at all that you do. So my simple assignment to you this morning, if all that we have been saying here has yielded results such that you will have such placards on a day Ghana 10 65, even though we are not measuring up to Malaysia, the country that had independence with us in the same year, then that's fine. But if they are not part of you, you have to speak up. Your silence is too loud. So that is my first issue for this morning. 
I understand that the president has traveled to Dubai, and this time the president flew commercial. Congratulations to President Kufuado and his team, and all the people that he went with. The president flew commercial. Well, we've been talking about it and asking that the president flies commercial, the president shows leadership from the front, the president uh, cuts down on some of the expenditure and all of that. So it should be good news to us. But the question is, how long ago did President Akufuado and his team know that there's something called commercial flight? How long ago did they, did they realize that there's something called commercial flight? Because the IMF boss is talking, the World Bank boss, they're talking. And I keep telling you that there's the African proverb that if your mother is dead and you say she's asleep, very soon it will be dinner time. We shall see where you will go and eat. The clean admission that the country is broke has not come emphatically from the side of government. And you see, in order to solve a problem, you need to properly accept that there's a problem, diagnose the problem, and fix the problem. We have not diagnosed it. So when you talk and say that the economy is terrible, and then you will be told, for example, that blame COVID. Now we are even blaming uh, Russia and Ukraine for our challenges. We blame COVID. Now we have turned around and we are blaming Russia and Ukraine. But the people we go and borrow money from, they have told us that your economy was performing terribly before all of these things came, and that you have actually borrowed more than you have declared to your people that you have borrowed. That is not honesty. That is dishonesty. And if you are asking people to rally around you, to support you, to govern and rule, nobody wants Ghana to crash. I don't want, because when Ghana crashes, where am I going? I love my country. But while I love my country, I will also ensure that the people who are in leadership will be honest and truthful and diligent with us. I am altogether happy. The president is traveling commercial. Fantastic. Will it be a nine-day wonder? Will it continue when things bounce back better? Or will it continue traveling commercial? When we ask the president, we will ask the speaker of parliament. I understand he's gone for his medical checkup. Did he also fly commercial? Did he go by private jet? Did he go by first class? We need to know. But you see, President Kufado flying commercial, it doesn't negate the fact that we have asked questions that have not been answered about how much it has cost the taxpayer since he started flying the private jets. It is accountability, preamble of the 1992 constitution. I didn't put it there. The president fought for the constitution as well. So, you must be accountable to the people first. And you see, once you start flying commercial, there are two things. Shika etan, shika nasan. So now you know there's something called commercial flight. Suddenly, we understand that there's commercial flight. When people were telling you, were telling you, same attitude when you had over 100 ministers, and we're telling you, there are too many. You said, keep quiet, I know what I'm doing. I know what effects and results I'm looking for. You see where you have brought all of us? Because I always tell people in power, you are not governing with your own power. Power emanates from the people. And you are not governing with your own money. Even if you borrow it, you borrow on our behalf. Taxes are generated from us. You are asking us to pay e-levy so that you do everything. Build roads, school feeding, blah, 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 everything. But we are the ones going to pay for it. In fact, your target for e-levy has even elapsed. Because January is gone, February is gone, we are in March. It was for the full fiscal year of 2022. And the suspicion that people had that you were going to use the e-levy as collateral to borrow more has been exposed by the roads minister. He could not tell lies. And he spoke under oath in parliament. So, even though we are told you that you had borrowed too much and you are told us in opposition that any dimwit can go and borrow because it's easy, you have now come, you have borrowed and borrowed and borrowed over borrowed and beyond borrowing instead of doing Ghana beyond aid. And now you are even trying to collect the small that is left to go and use as collateral to go and borrow more. Oh, this can't go see our 
Hey! Well, I will wrap up this way. And this is supposed to be coming from the pulpit, Bishop Samuel Mensah of the Full Gospel Church. Our pastors are quiet. The same pastors who are very vocal are quiet. You don't see people now holding regular all nights to pray for Ghana. You don't see women congregating aflame to pray for Ghana. You don't see people moving up to a Kosombo dam to go and pray for the water to come up. We have seen all of those ones before. Same pulpit. So now we are asking where the men of God are. Are the men of God now men of gold such that they put their palms in armpits fold and watch on? They have to be men of God, not men of gold. So today, perhaps they have forgotten their job. They are winning more souls. That's fine. But the voice of reason must come from the pulpit, must come from the mosque. Because the church and the mosque are the voices of reason of society. So I have a beautiful message from this Osofo. He's a typical gun man and he spoke his mind. I will play the full thing for about one minute, about two minutes. Think about it. And if you have a pastor friend who used to speak who is now quiet, call him and tell him, That's all for Johnny's Bite. Play the video for them. Good morning. Different parties, but one people. One of the good things our politicians have succeeded in doing in this country is to divide us. They have succeeded to divide us for their selfish ambitions and desires. Sometimes we think that the people do not know where some pastors stand when it comes to partisan politics. How come some pastors' voices are so loud when party A is in power and the same pastor is silent when party B comes to power? Regardless of all the wrong and the evil and the, all the wrong things happening, they are quiet. It is an error. As the pastor myself, let us be conscious that the people are aware, they know what is happening. Someone told me that when a particular party is in government, is in power, their church will organize regular all night. Regular all night and pray for the president and the party. But the moment another party comes to power, that church will hardly organize all night and pray for the government and the party. As ministers and of the gospel, pastors should rise above partisan politics. We should be able to speak truth to power regardless of who is in government. Like Paul said, I can say with all honesty, I am a true Ghanaian. I am patriotic. Regardless of who is in power, I have the grace to speak truth to power. That must be the kind of leaders who must rise up about partisan politics for the sake of national agenda. In this house there are NDCs and MPDs and, and all the various political parties, but that should not divide us.